السلام عليكم مرحبا يعطيكم العافيه اهلا وسهلا فيكم ورجعنا بحلقه جديده مع طلال وبتمنى اليوم تكون بنكهه اليوم هي حتكون ان شاء الله بنكهه مختلفه حيكون صديقي ان شاء الله الدكتور كلاوديو فرنارارو صراحه دكتور كلاوديو فرنارارو انا بعرفه من فتره طويله حبيت انه نحن نوسع البرنامج ونكون نحن مع حدا غير من خارج الوطن العربي حتى ناخذ شويه خبرات اكثر وبرجع بقول لكم دائما هدف برنامجنا انه نحن نقدر نفهم تفاصيل العلاج اكثر ما نشوف ابيض واسود نحن بدنا نعرف شو عم يصير جوا وحنسمع من اسم اللي عم يشتغل بهذا الموضوع بشكل اكبر طبعا دكتور كلاوديو فرنرارو هو سبيكر ويل نون وورد وايد طبعا نحن اليوم عم نعمل انتدكشن انا بعرف معظم اللي عم تابعونا هن من الوطن العربي هالمره حيكون معنا ايضا متابعين من خارج الوطن العربي سو اي بي سبيكينج ان عربيك اند ان انجلش سو اولسو الاو مي تو انتدوس دكتور كلاوديو فرنرارو از اي تولد يو هي از ا جود فريند اوف ماين اي نيو كلاوديو فور ا لونج تايم اكشلي دكتور كلاوديو جراديويتد فروم فاكولتي اوف دنتستري ان فلورنس يونيفرسيتي ان تو 2004 and guess what is the surprise he graduated from uh, his specialty as an oral surgeon so he is an oral surgeon he graduated in 2007 then he came to our club and became an endodontist and did uh, his uh, uh, deepest specialty in endodontics and uh, became an endo and actually he became a worldwide well-known speaker he do a lot of hands-on of courses he has his own institute and he do hands-on courses worldwide uh, and he has a practice limited to micro endodontics please allow me to introduce my friend dr claudio hi dr claudio hello, hello. my friend i'm very happy to be here And really, I have no words to thank you. Uh, even in this hard time, it's very nice that uh, once upon a while we meet. Because I really will never forget between all the travel I've made worldwide, uh, the nice congress in Damascus uh, many years ago. It's still yes. in my mind. <laughs> yes. Looking forward to do it again and to invite you again, my friend. Uh, how is the situation now with Corona? Do you have lockdown? down in Italy. What is the situation now? In Italy, it's not very good, the situation, because uh, every month uh, we do the count, uh, uh, you know, of how many positive we have. And recently, there are some regions that are still uh, in some lockdown. Vaccination are not going very fast, so we hope uh, that things will get better soon. Hopefully, to, to be able for you to travel, because I know how much you love the traveling. And by the way, for our audience, You know, Dr. Cloud, he loves also always to try new types of food. So, <laughs> he, he, especially when he, he was in, in China, a lot of things, strange things, <laughs> he tried it. I think after this pandemic, we should quit uh, eating uh, some too much strange things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my friend. So let's go into our subject. Actually, today we're going to see a case of uh, uh, Radix Intomolaris, how Dr. Claudio deal with this case, how he read it with his uh, philosophy. So please, can you share your screen just to start your yes. presentation and discussion of the case? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, my friend, now we can see everything. Go ahead. Okay, so as endodontics, it's a very nice I have to keep in mind that for sure we need a good vision. So what I would like to emphasize is that probably uh, not everybody has a microscope, but to do endo at a medium at a high level, I think that magnification is really a must. So, If you don't, do not have at least loops, I strongly suggest you to start with loops because everything will change. And also, I would like to emphasize another thing that many masters told me, that even if you have magnification, your eyes will never see something that you have not studied and something that your mind is not prepared to comprehend. So magnification versus education and study all the things. As the case, we will uh, analyze soon the radix and tomolaris, for example. 
My friend, because... also, uh, just emphasizing what you are saying about the importance of magnification, because always we keep in, uh, focusing on this point. For those who are not using a magnification, they want to start with loops. A lot of questions they will come. Do you recommend to start with 2.5 or with 3.5x? Or sometimes can we go immediately to 4x, 5x? What is your input about this? Uh, what is what your advice for our followers? Okay, I will tell you what uh, I have done once I graduated because uh, I started naked eye, so with uh, nothing. After I started with a 2.5 Galilean, and uh, you know, I started, I was a generic, I started to do cavities, and uh, it happens that I have to remade all cavities that I did uh, naked eye when I started using my 2.5 loops. After one year, they weren't enough, so I upgraded with 4.5. In this case, uh, they were prismatic loops. And I went and see what I have done with my 2.5 loops, and it happens to me to redo a lot of works. After I upgraded to microscope, but I refused to go and see what I have done with 4.5 loops. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I was going to be broke, you know. <laughs> no, I know, it's just a joke. But I suggest somebody that has never started with magnification to start with a medium low magnification as 2.5, 2.8 Galilean. In this way, mm -hmm. Galilean uh, lets you to have everything in focus because the depth of field, it's uh, pretty big. It's about 13, 14 centimeters. So if you use 2.5, 2.8, you will have your central incisor in focus and also your third molar. So you will have the difficulty, you know, when you have a working position to readapt everything. After a while, if you want, you can upgrade to a 4.5 uh, prismatic. But I don't suggest it to a very new user to start immediately to 4.5. In some cases, uh, you know, you may have some problem and maybe you take it and you don't use it. So we don't want this. Okay, my friend, I have some questions actually uh, just about uh, asking about the translation. Uh, I will try um, um, I will try to do it at the end of the presentation. I will summarize the main point of Dr. Claudio. So, uh, main points. الأساسية بالحلقة تبع الدكتور كلاوديو بالعربي بالأخير وأنا بعملكم سامري بالعادة كنا بنحكي بالعربي بعمل سامري بالإنجليزي هلا بنحكي بالإنجليزي بنعمل سامري بالعربي لحتى نوصل لأكبر شريحة ممكنة. Okay, my friend, go ahead and let's have an idea about your case. Okay, so you, my friend, you already told that we have Arabic and Tumulari, so I cannot make the question to the audience, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of, of audience ask me what it, it is about what because usually okay. I, I, I want to <laughs> okay no problem it's okay okay so let's analyze what i would like to emphasize it's that every time we have to do a root canal treatment for sure we cannot ever start without a pre-operative radiograph it's very very important but it's not only important to have a pre-operative radiograph but we have, as I wrote here, invest time in the observation. And I like the term invest instead of spend, you know, because sometimes we spend time in not useful things. Instead, the term invest, it means that you are observing for a reason, to get your job easier. For example, looking at this inferior molar, we already have to invest around 30, 60 seconds of time to analyze the tooth, to try to understand what might be the difficulties that we are going to face before to start. For example, in this case, if we pay close attention, we can see the margin of the radix, uh, of the extra radix that we have in this tooth. But it is not the only thing that I could look looking at this radiograph. For example, I suggest you to divide the tooth in three parts and analyze all these three parts independently. You have to look Actually, at this. Actually, that's what uh, I wanted to ask you, because we keep saying, OK, let's give our time for reading the preoperative x-ray. Give more time, give more time. What is your strategy? How can we uh, get benefits of this time? Or do you have any, any uh, recommendation 
to be able to catch all the details needed to be catched before starting our work. Okay, yes, for sure. One of these is to divide the tooth in three parts, coronal, middle, and apical part. So the first uh, eye, the first sight that I would look, it would be the pulp chamber to understand if I might encounter some difficulties in the first step of our therapy, the opening of the pulp chamber. For example, if I see a completely obliterated pulp chamber, I may know that I need to take more time for it. I may need magnification and I may need ultrasonic and specifically tip. So I already be prepared about this. In the middle part, I can have a look if I see the canal all around the radiograph. So I may have an idea if this canal will be tight or they will be larger. So I may imagine in my mind if I am in front of a, an easy case or a difficult case. In the apical part, at the end, I can notice if I have an apical curvature or if I see the canal disappear or in a sudden that this may be another sign of bifurcation or some mm -hmm. sign of classification. Okay, very nice. And for, let's uh, keep uh, talking about uh, the radiograph specifically. So we have seen the extra... Actually, actually, CBCT, do you recommend... Sorry, my friend, I wanted to mm -hmm. ask you. Uh, CBCT, in such cases, do you recommend or not? Uh, uh, what is your uh, strategy? Do you recommend it in each case you are doing in retreatment, in treatment, anterior, posterior? What is your input? What's your advice when to use CBCT in such cases? Okay, let's say that the CBCT in the recent years have been developing a lot. More and more clinics have CBCT. We have specific guidelines, uh, uh, both the American Association of Endodontists and the European EIZ, we have a guideline, so for sure, if we go through the guidelines, but there are many, I won't enunciate it all, there are specific strategy. So in very difficult anatomy, in which you may have not a good idea in 2D, the intrication of the canal system, it is indicated in dancing dentist. In uh, retreatment, I strongly suggested because many, many times, bidimensionally, we are not able to see some preservation or some deep problem that we may have. So since I have been a oral surgeon also, I don't want to do the same mistake that some oral surgeon did in the past, just to extract the tooth and not to do a root canal treatment. At the same time, I don't want to try to recover uh, a very difficult case, for example, a retreatment, but a hopeless tooth. So for sure, CBCT, it's really, really recommended in, in my opinion, almost in any retreatment case. Okay, almost in any, because many, many times we see things that made the prognosis of the tooth completely different. But I don't recommend it in a virgin tooth like this, for example. I would never do a CBCT for this case, even if it has an extra radix. So we might we must have a balance. You know, I know that in some clinics they do CBCT for any kind of treatment of virgin treatment, but I'm not uh, supporting this idea. Okay, not in all cases, but in some selected cases. No, do you hear me, Talal? Hello. Hello. Sorry, I don't hear. Continue, my friend. Continue till I fix the. Fix okay. The okay. Okay. He told me that. I cannot hear Talal, but we are still online. Okay, so let's keep looking at the radix, as I told you. The, we see the extra radix, but we can have an idea also about the mesial root. Okay, if, we if you look closely at the mesial root, I don't see the canal. 
So I already can keep in mind that these canals will be very tight. Okay, so as I always tell to my students, we must do a canal treatment, a planning of every root canal treatment in our mind, a treatment plan. We always hear about orthodontic treatment plan, implant treatment plan, prosthetic treatment plan, but we are not very used to do an endodontic treatment plan. So if we look at this molar, we have four roots. And in my mind, I have four different treatment plan to do because every tooth is different and every canal is different from the other one. Okay, so this is a very important concept that I would like you to have in mind. And for sure, it is very important to understand if we are front, for example, in a radix and tomolaris, because we don't want to miss that extra root. So there are some guidelines or some tips that I can suggest you. Once you open the tooth, you may want to watch about the symmetricity of the canal that you find. And if you don't find a good symmetricity, you may have an additional canal. So you may want to extend your opening distolingual, in this case, of radix. And for sure, also the root inclination and the root canal curvature, it is important because uh, not knowing this information, this may lead to some procedural errors during the endodontic therapy. So it is important that you have in mind that this case can happen. And we are around 2 and 4% in literature in which we can have an extra root. So it's important. It's not a lot, but, you know, 2 for 4%, four it means uh, that in a practice in which you do 300 uh, molars uh, every year, you may encounter quite a while of radix and tomolaris. Okay, my friend, sorry, I missed you. I hope that uh, okay. you can hear me now. Very nice. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I was listening to your presentation. I just wanted to highlight if you have any clinical, uh, I don't know if you speak about it, any clinical uh, highlights. If, for example, we didn't spend too much time reading the x-ray, but we started immediately doing the root canal treatment. Do you have any clinical tips that can lead me to this presence of entomolaris? Uh, yes, I, I just uh, said it uh, about the possibility, okay. not every, but one, yes, I missed the one, so uh, you remind me. Okay. We can focus also after opening the pop chamber on the color of the floor. When I see dark, uh, I'm on the floor of the pulp chamber, so I also this make me, could make me understand that I need to extend the opening in a direction in which I could find uh, an extra route. Yes, and okay. this okay. message. No. Do, do, do you suggest that probing, uh, periodontal probing before doing preoperatively can give me an idea about the concentricity or the shape of the outer root? So I may be expecting something inside. Probably it could help, but many times in a healthy tooth, probing will, will not help, help you much depending on the position of the extra root. But for sure, looking at uh, from an occlusal point of view, you may take a look and probe around the uh, CAJ to see if you have maybe, you know, not a concavity, the opposite of a concavity, and it may lead to the presence of an extra root. And another suggestion that uh, I forgot to tell, sometimes it is essential to do a double radiograph. So not only an orthogonal radiograph, but you may yes. want to... Very important. So this is uh, mainly important because the extra root, uh, you know, may hide another root. So if you go orthogonally, you may not be able to see it. So in, in these cases, and you think you have an extra root, or if you have any sign of a strange anatomic of the inferior molar, it is for sure indicated to do a second inclinated okay. radiogram. Okay, man. So... The second step, very important, not only to uh, deal with uh, the radix and tomolaris, but in general, 
uh, during our endodontic procedure, it's the very important maneuver of canal scouting. And the word itself, it says, to scout, to explore. Because once I'm aware that I'm in front, for example, of this extra route, I may have in my mind that this route is tight because it's thin. But the confirmation of this sensation, I will have it only when I physically take a K file, an 8 or a 10, and I start negotiating the canal. So this is really a fundamental maneuver that I think it's a fundamental pillar in endodontics. Even if there are very famous lecturers that tell us that you can go directly with a nickel titanium uh, file inside the root canal. So I'm absolutely against this. I think canal scouting is still mandatory. OK. Okay. Because, you know, a lot of things that, that because we have too much uh, opinions, so uh, I can understand that you uh, really advise to inspect your root canal, to go with your K file in order to feel what is the resistance, and then you go for rotary rather than going for rotary immediately, even if they are glide bass files. Uh, yes, the first, the first exploration, really, uh, in my opinion, it is mandatory because, uh, as you never known what to expect when you do root canal treatment, so really, okay. I think it cannot be standardized. The first file, it's mandatory. Okay, go ahead. So uh, after I start a negotiation. Uh, with the K file, I start to have this tactile confirmation. And as I told you, we have to make uh, an endodontic treatment plan. So I started with looking at the radiograph, but once I have a sensation of in between my finger of the K file, I already can mentalize how much I could enlarge the root. I start to have an idea with the first file I insert. For sure, when I negotiated this tiny route where barely I could reach uh, the apex with an eight st at start, I already kept in my mind one number, zero four. You know, it's not the lottery, but it's the yes. taper. It's the taper that I imagine maximum that I could impress inside this route. So after I put the first file in this tiny root, I already know that this root will finish with a taper of four. And I made this treatment plan. On the other hand, for example, I will show you the post-operative. I impress a different taper in the other root because they were, of course, different. And the sensation I had it with the observation of the radiograph, but mainly for with the canal scouting. For example, these are four roots that I shaped in a different way. The mesial are 2504, the radix is 2004, and the distal is the 3004. So depending on the anatomy and of the different cases that you may face, you really might have to do a different treatment plan for each root of a molar with four like this actually it's a very very interesting philosophy which we need to focus and for our followers to know uh, about it very well because you if you open a case with multi-rooted multi-canals this does not mean that you have to end up with all canals with the same size, with the same taper. What you are emphasizing is very important and it is very nice, very good, very important to make a treatment plan for each canal. Consider it as, as, it, as if it is four teeth and you are going to treat it. This will lead me actually, Claudio, to the other question. You mentioned that you go for the mesial with 25, for the radix with the 20, and for the distal with 30, I mean the, the, the tip diameter, the apex diameter. Which, uh, what is the indicator for you to determine I have to stop here at 20 or 25 or 30? Can you highlight on this point, uh, please? Very important. Okay. For sure, we must do, you know, evidence-based endodontist. So, endodontics. So, we must know that in literature, we know that it counts more the foramen of the apex 
instead of a taper, depending on how much disinfection I may have inside the canals. So we know from literature that we at least should enlarge the, ap uh, the apical foramen to 25 or a 30. 30, it would be the gold standard in many, many uh, articles. But yes. at the same time, we must find a balance between this necessity and the root canal structure, because we don't want to over enlarge or destroy a root because I pretend to enlarge it to a very big size just because I have, you know, to irrigate it. That's why, once again, it is important the observation of the radiograph and the canal scouting. So I can find the balance. And in, in those roots, for example, in this very small and tight root in which I could not go over a 20, I put some strategy to try to make the irrigation more favorable. For example, activating my irrigants. That's what I was uh, willing to ask you, activation. Do you recommend ultrasonic or what type of activation in such anatomy of, of severe curvature? And also the obturation. Yes. Okay, for sure. Okay, yes, and also the shaping. For sure, uh, I would recommend to spend enough time. If you have very long and curved roots, you need to spend some time for irrigation. So I would say in literature, there is nothing about the topic of time of irrigation. So it's very hard to speak evidence-based, you can speak a clinical with clinical experience. But usually when you have very long roots, I spend at least 10 minutes activating the irrigant with subsonic activation and with a manual activation. The manual activation is very simple. For example, in this radix, I used to shape with the 2004 with Martin Sikit file, but later we can talk about it. And then with a single cone of gutta percha that went to the apex, just pump inside a sodium hypochlorite. This may help you to have both activation and to make the sodium hypochlorite to reach the most important part that it's the apex. Okay, very nice. Very nice. Because you are emphasizing a very important issue that to use the sonic, because some, some dentists will think, okay, I'm going to use the ultrasonics, and they forget that it is it will make a ledge. Sometimes it, it can create a ledge with abrupt curvature, early curvatures in the coronal part if you use an ultrasonic. So the sonic would, would be, even if the power of the sonic is not as much as the power of the ultrasonic, but it, it will help a lot in this case. Yes, I agree with you, because sometimes the dentist just put a file inside, use the ultrasonic, but the things that they, they see to come outside in the sodium hypochlorite is just denting of a wall, you know, and it's not the activation of the irrigants. So I would be really careful, yes, about okay. this. So another thing I would like to emphasize is that when we have this kind of curvature, for sure, uh, it helps us also the use of some uh, heat-treated files. You know, yeah, the new files. Yes, we have a series of new martensitic files that really help us uh, in doing this job. And they are very flexible, can help us, and they are much more resistant in cycling fatigues and torsional stresses. For example, in this case, I use the Orodeca file that are very good, especially in the Zero 4 taper that recently, I don't know if you agree with me, uh, many, many uh, dentists and lecturers started to switch from Zero 6 taper, that was the standard some years ago, to a Zero 4 taper. Mm -hmm. Because we know that the pericervical dentity is very, very important for the tooth structure. So at least since we have enough space for irrigation doing a 25 or a 30 at the apex, we may limit the shaping to a 04 instead of 06. Okay. And after the activation of the irrigants and spending some time on the irrigant, for sure we need to three-dimensionally uh, obturate the tooth. 
So also recently we have started to have in the market new sealers that are improving uh, the quality of our obturation, like the bioceramic that nowadays we have, I think, around eight or ten years of experience about bioceramic. So we know that they work. But, uh, you know, since I have an audience of a generic dentists, not only specialists, I would recommend to be really careful with the use of bioceramic. I don't know if uh, you agree with me, so we can discuss also this topic, because as we know, it's, it's a strong material that it's very hard to remove. So for sure, if you use bioceramic, I want, you know, the general dentist to be very precise on the working length because some error may be more difficult after if we don't respect the working length. Yes, I do agree with you because it's, it will be more difficult in retreatment comparing with the other sealers. Yes, in this case, it's, uh, I used uh, a carrier-based obturation specifically also because for example if we continue to analyze this case if i was going to use a continuous wave of condensation as you see i didn't open much the tooth so for sure if i want to bring a heat at four millimeters from the working length i have some curvature and it wouldn't probably exist a heat tip that would reach four millimeter to the working length so in such cases, for example, the radix, if I had to do continuous wave of condensation, probably I should have go to here and in a very tiny route with a low taper, there is no heat that would reach uh, the correct uh, working length for a continuous wave. So this is where the carrier based obturation it may help us. And uh, you know, uh, a nice thing is that bioceramic with a single cone in reality, when I explain to the student, I call it I called it a carrier-based obturation also because uh, it's like yes. a, a, a carrier-based obturation uh, with the bioceramic, you know, in which the carrier it's a gutta percha in this case. So uh, I do agree. Very nice. I do agree with you. Very nice. Very nice to, to have the three D obturation at the very end. Otherwise, we will end up with single cone with heat with a sealer, not like uh, the bioceramics. Exactly, and this was an old case in which you can see also the resorption of a, a pulp canal sealer that I used. You know, so it's very hard, I think, to change the material because gutta percha probably exists since 50 or 60 years. So we have really a strong literature and millions and millions of cases. But for sure, this new bioceramic, uh, we are at 10 years, I think in the next future, if they modified something, they really could be a big uh, a big change game. They will change this game. Okay, very nice case. Uh, thank you, Dr. Claudio, for this uh, very, very detailed, uh, actually, uh, explanation. It was very nice to have this idea. Uh, I have so uh, actually a lot of questions. I, I, I will ask you actually if you go if you have time to go back to the to, because we will keep we will keep it because a lot of, of audience are asking will you keep it or will you delete it? No, we will keep it. So you can uh, go back and Dr. Claudio hopefully who will go and will read the questions and will answer the questions because I think we are over time. But I have I have uh, I will mention some questions. Uh, uh, one question from the audience from Dr. Mazen regards to his uh, presence and his support from the dentistry online. Uh, what is the presence of radix intomolaris in Italy? And is it mandatory for each radix intomolaris to have a canal inside it or not? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand the question. What is the percentage between the Italian population? Cases of radix intomolaris in Italy. Any any publication regarding it, Italian pop, uh, population and the percentage? Ah, of okay. Uh, I think in Caucasian population there are some articles and they led to zero point five to two point five percent. This should be what I remember for Caucasian. But in Indian for, for in Indian population it's much higher. For example, I read some article that it may lead to eight percent. So in uh, India, Italy, we have more. Italy, have any in Italy? 
specifically in Italy, no, I think uh, uh, I didn't see any article specifically on uh, Italian population. Uh, is it mandatory to have any canal? If we have, uh, is there any cases of radix intermolaris, do you think, without canals? Or if you have a route, it is mandatory to have a canal? Uh, let's say that usually if there is an extra route, I think unless it is completely obliterated, there must be a canal inside. Also because this is a, a biological and histological point of view. If we don't have the pulp inside, that route would have never been formed. So for sure, there must be a canal inside. Yes. Okay, my friend, thank you, Dr. Claudio. Really, it's been a very, very nice talk with you. Uh, I hope to stay more and more, but usually we are at, uh, uh, attached to the uh, uh, the uh, timing. Do you want, I think I think you 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 need to say, to add something, my friend. I, I can see. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know if you see the the Congress oh. yet. I would like, uh, and I hope that uh, we will be able to hold this Congress in Florence next year, in which sure. there are many national speaker invited and I think you see one that has the same haircut as me here <laughs> so I, I hope I, I hope you you will be able to come my friend Professor Hashem and, and many other Italian friends so keep in touch and we will give you much more instruction on the social if this will be possible or not for any question I am ready to answer to the audience uh, on Dentistry United, I can come and I can comment if you have any question and whenever you want. Thank you, Thank you my friend. Really appreciate your time. It was a very interesting uh, episode with you. We will keep it and uh, people can see the uh, lecture. Hope to meet you again and again. And for now, bye-bye, my friend, and hope to see you again and again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, my friend. Bye-bye. اوكي شكرا كثير لكم شكرا لحضوركم حقيقه كانت حلقه كثير مميزه الحكى فيها عن رادكس انتمولارس باختصار كثير مهم انه نحن نحاول تو انفست تايم نحاول قدر الامكان ناخذ وقت كافي لنا لحتى نقدر نقرا صوره شعاعيه ونقسمها ونعمل تريتمنت بلان نقطه كثير مهمه حكى عليها الدكتور كلاوديو نعمل تريتمنت بلان لكل جزر كل جزر من الجزور نحن نحاول نشتغل عليه نحاول انه نحن نحط له طريقه عمل يمكن يكون له قياس مختلف يمكن يكون له تيبر مختلف هدول كلياتهم ممكن نقسمهم يعني مو قلنا والله فتحنا سن فهو كل الكنالات نفس الدياميتر ونفس القياس فنعمل انفستمنت اكثر بالوقت نحاول نستفيد من خريطه الحجره اللبيه لحتى نقدر نوصل للرادكس انتمولارس نسبتها قد تصل في بعض الحالات لل 8% بتكون غالبا ضيقه كثير نحاول ما كثير نكون اجريسيف نحاول نعمل سكاوتنج ندخل بالفايلات بهدوء قدر الامكان لحتى نقدر نعمل او نقدر نعمل لها انسبكشن للكنال وما نعمل ليدجز نعمل تنظيف لها بالسونيك لانه السونيك كثير مفيد والحشو ممكن يكون بالبايو سيراميكس ثلاثي الابعاد او ممكن نعمل كارير بيزد اوبريتورز وبرجع بقول لكم شكرا لكم شكرا لحضوركم بتمنى تكون هالحلقه استفدتوا منها ودائما دائما برجع بقول لكم لا تنسوني من صالح الدعاء وشكر خاص لدنتستري اونلاين شركائنا بهذا البرنامج ونشوفكم على خير مره ثانيه يعطيكم العافيه